So now let's start then. Um, today we will solve a couple of examples, uh, problems about node voltage method and mesh current methods. So now let's see what kind of questions uh, we may face in today's um, cell tutorial. So let me change it. Here, um, this PDF file will be shared throughout our channel. Um, so, node voltage method versus mesh current method. Today, we're going to compare and see a couple of examples um, related to these topics. So, the first of all, what is node voltage method and what is a mesh current method? So, the both of them uh, we're going to use to identify uh, the exact voltages, electric potentials, or some kind of a current inside of the circuit using different me methods. Uh, but the both of the methods are um, based on Kirchhoff's current law. Um, so what is the difference? In a mesh current method, we're going to use uh, lots of meshes and the currents itself. For example, um, in that we have labeled AA, AC, AD, IE, IB uh, as a currents inside of this mesh. Uh, but when it comes to the node voltage method, First of all, we should use uh, the one of these nodes as a reference node. So uh, to be easy, in most cases, this node, I mean, these three points will be chosen as a reference. Why? Because they share the same electric potential. The same electric potential means they, uh, the voltage difference between them is zero. That means we can assume these three points as just one point. So let's see this um, as an example. Now we have chosen um, this one. So we've chosen uh, this one in our first example. So the first of all, um, can you assume which one of them is the reference node? Which one of these points, these uh, dots, can we choose our reference point? Absolutely these two points here. Yeah? So now let me label. So this is our reference point. So there's something in chat. Ah, okay. And these two essential nodes should be labeled it as V1 or V2 or just VA and VB. Um, and we should assume that all of the currents at these points should exit the node, like this in directions. So this direction. But when it comes to this direction, we cannot write like this because there is already uh, some kind of a independent current source. Sorry, dependent current source. So let me not draw this. Uh, but when it comes to here, we can also draw like this because there is nothing about sources. So let me write down A. So A is entering here, but there is independent voltage source. Its positive polarity is connected to our disessential node. So in that case, if your uh, independent source connected to um, your essential node with a positive polarity, you should write like this, VA minus 50. So divided by our resistance is six. So, so um, the next one, the next part, it's about here. We cannot um, tell about resistance here because there is no resistance. There is just dependent current source. So, but it is not exciting from this point, it's entering. So, so this is just uh, some kind of incoming current 
from here. That's why we should use minus sign here. Then plus this direction. It's just VB minus VA. It's VA minus VB. Current goes from the high potential to the low potential. Here, high potential is VA. So it goes from VA to VB, VA minus VB over two. So now we have left one current. This is VA over eight. It's going to be low, as you can see here. So yeah, we forgot plus, plus here, not, not plus VA over eight. So let me just minimize it. VA over eight equals zero. And when it comes to this resistance, the high potential is VA, but the, uh, it's, going, it's going through the eight resistance to the zero voltage. So that's why VA minus zero, it's can VA. So this equals to zero. So now we will consider VB uh, potential, this, this point. So this point, we have the uh, outgoing current to the left from VA to V, from VB to VA, and outgoing from VB to VA, also from upper side, 3I1. And we have, in this case, incoming current. This is 5A from the right side. So this 5 ampere is entering to the VB or just incoming current. So note that reference is always zero in potential. It's electric potential is zero. So let's write B case. So this is, first of all, VB minus VA over two. So from this side, VB minus VA or two, then this is um, exiting from this node. That's why we should use VB. Now we can use directly through I. Yeah, I want to use like this. Okay. I'm just explaining why it's plus because it's exiting from yeah. this node. Yeah, okay, I guess. Exiting. 3i1, then this about this four ohms, we should just write Vb over four because this reference is zero. Vb, Vb, so assume this is Vb, divided by four. Then what is about this five amperes? It's not exciting. That's just entering to this node. That's why we should use minus sign for it. Just five. So this whole thing will be zero. So now, as you can see, we have two equations, but as you can see, there are three unknowns, VA, VB, I1. So in this case, we need one more equation and we have to find the definition of I1. As you can see here, I1 is kind of going across uh, six ohm resistance. So we can find I1 uh, by this, but in this case, in this branch, it's kind of from, it's the current going from 50 uh, voltage source to VA. So I1 equals to 50 minus VA over six. So as you can see, when the diagram has dependent voltage source or current source, you always have to derive I1 or V1. If it's I1, that means there's a dependent current source. You have to define it uh, from the branch that's going to be given. And then you can kind of substitute this value in equation A1, A and B. For example, in A, instead of three I1, you can write three multiplied 50 minus VA over six. And B equation, you can, instead of three, one I1 plus two I1, you can also can I substitute I1 with this C equation. You can write this C. So, so I think everything here 
is understandable for our members. So and if there is some kind of equations regarding these three equations, you can directly write in chat on just turn on your mic and let's make a debate. If, if may, maybe we have did something incorrectly. So if there are no questions, we're not going to solve this problem till the end. We're going to consider all other examples. Just the remaining part is simple. At the end of the uh, video lecture, we will send the solution uh, with the answers, okay? So we right now only kind of <clears throat> see, derive yeah. the equations. We, but at the end of the lecture, you'll be shared with the solutions. We should just give the emphasis to identifying um, the exact. Could you please ask just a question? So there is something in chat. Deora Rosmatova, could you please explain why five minus VA? Okay. Um, because of the current? Yeah. Uh, see. Okay. Uh, when writing the equation of VA, we write VA minus 50, although the current is incoming, yeah? This is because by the definition of node voltage, you always have to take, it's gonna recommend to take the currents going out of the node. So that's why in this case, we got, or we write VA minus 50. But when deriving the definition of I1 equation, we take, we only look at this branch, yeah, at this branch, and you can see that I1 is going from 50 to VA, and the current always goes through from high potential to low potential, because across uh, uh, six ohm resistance, there will be voltage drop. For example, 50 V is going, is going there, then voltage drop, and then VA. So the value of VA is less than 50 V, so that's why it's 50 minus VA. But as you can see in equation A, we're going to write VA minus 50 because as a definition of node voltage, you have to take uh, the currents going out of the node. But it's entering the but, reference. Yeah, yeah see, uh, <clears throat> only, only if the dependent current source is given, for example, like this one, you'll take its direction as it's given. 3 I1, but I1 is not dependent current source. This is independent, so that's why you're going to take outgoing. But when you're writing definition of I1, when you only consider this branch, you take as it's given. So let me take a screenshot of this. One more question here. Ah, no. So. Thanks. Again. Okay, let's move to the next problem. Okay, we are happy to help you. So we just emphasized um, to make uh, the equations correctly here, not to solve them. This just to use your arithmetics to solve this kind of a um, kindergarten uh, system of equations. Yeah. Next question. So let me erase everything here. Next question. So from our PDF file, let's pick another problem to solve. So let's see this example. So, from here, uh, there is no sub points with the same um, electric potential. There is just one point here. So, now let's take this as a reference. So, now let's take this as a reference. Okay. Um, so, as you pay attention, there is three essential nodes. So let's label them. This is just V0, for example. So um, 
So <clears throat> as you can see here, we have V0 is there. And now we're going to write the equation at this node. So current is going to the left from V0. So, so let's just write direction to the left. That's the definition of our Walsh method. So down and to the right. So uh, when the current goes to the left, it goes from V0 to 10 voltage, OK? 10, uh, 10 voltage, yeah. You can write here 10 voltage. Here, yeah, I mean, yeah. So here is 10 voltage. So why? Because uh, there is nothing after this. No resistance. No resistance. That's why if this, our reference is zero, so there should always and absolutely should be 10 voltage. And here is also 12 I delta. But this minus. That with a minus sign. So pay attention to the polarities of the uh, voltage sources. So the case is that if the outgoing polarity is plus, you write the plus. The left side, you write the plus. From the right side, there's a minus. So that's why we write minus 20 I delta. To the next, to the next equation, yeah. Yeah, sure, sure. I mean, yeah, sure. just leveling. Okay, okay, got it. So here is minus 12 20. I, 20, yeah, sorry, 20 I delta. So now we can write the equation at V0 note so from the left side it's going to be v0 minus 10 over 10 ohms v0 minus 10 or 10 ohms okay uh, the current goes to the down this is v0 minus zero as you know the ground in the ground the voltage is always zero v0 minus zero over 40 ohm so we can just... And uh, the most tricky part is the current going to the right. It's V0 minus, in the brackets, minus 20 I delta. So V0 minus, minus brackets. Then in the, inside of brackets, there is minus 12. If, if you directly write plus 20 I delta, it may be a little bit tricky. And some, some, some okay, yeah, for understanding, write as it is. So over 20 ohms equals zero. So as you can see now, we have two unknown variables and one equation. And there is the current I delta. We have to define one more equation to solve system of equations, OK? So you can see, as in the leftmost branch, the current I delta is going across the 10 volt um, the voltage source, and in this in this uh, the, um, point, in this point, the current incoming and the current incoming and uh, two currents is kind of divided into two currents. One current is going to the up, and one more current is going to the right. So you can see I delta is incoming. We can write this I one and I two outgoing currents. This is I one. Uh -huh. And uh, the current is going to the right. Yeah, here, you can write it here. It's going to be I2. So we can write I delta equals I1 and I2 and easily find the definition for I1 and I2. So I delta, I delta equals I1 plus I2. So we can now find I1 and I2. So as you can see, I1 is going from 10 voltage source to the go up, up, up to minus 20 I delta. So the below we can write I, uh, I delta equals, oh, sorry. I delta equals to uh, 10 minus, minus 20 I delta over 30 ohm because you know i1 is going through the 30 ohm resistance <coughs> over 30 and now i2 as you can see i2 is is going through the 10 ohm resistance and it's starting at 10 voltage source and it's going to be v0 so I2 is equal to plus, you can write instead of I2 plus, 10 minus V0 over 10 ohm. So I1 plus 
We are substituting I one and I two. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Plus over ten minus V zero over ten. Uh, v zero minus ten. No, no, no. Ten minus V zero. You know that I two is going from ten to the V zero. Ah, yeah. We are assuming. So you know when the when you get i one or i two or i delta minus sign, that means you got the wrong direction. But that's not problem. You only just multiply minus one and you take the absolute value. Yeah. So the minus is not important. Minus means you kind of assume the wrong direction. What's really important is the magnitude. So now you can uh, substitute the values. Uh, I mean i delta in this value and easily find v zero. So, so any kind of question regarding this problem? So now we have three variables and three equations. No, no, Just no, no we have, you, you don't consider second second equation. Yeah. It's so in, in the first equation, the second equation is there are two unknown variables, V zero, I delta, V zero, I delta. And you can use these two equations to find out V zero and I delta. We have just, this is I one, this is I two. No, 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 this no, one. This one, so yeah. I'm continuing this writing error. So, questions? So, if there is no questions regarding this problem, we'll move to the next example. So, let me take the screenshot of this problem. So, from our book, this PDF file, let's pick the another problem to solve. So very similar problem to the, uh, the example that we've just solved. So let's take this one. It's a bit trickier. Yeah, that's a bit trickier and a little bit complicated. Okay. So, clear my screen Question. Yeah. Ah, there is a question. Is that mid samples? No, this is not a mid sam samples. There are just exercises, examples from the lecture notes of the professors. I nearly forgot to share this whiteboard. <laughs> so, this is not a mid samples. This is uh, some samples, some sample um, exercises. exercises recommended by the professor so uh, here you can see uh, and in the bottom these three points share the same electric potential because there is no resistance between them so we can pick them as a reference node so here this is v so now let's take this as a v0 this is as v1 and this is as V2. And now let's write uh, the equations to each of them. So let's start with V1. In V1, now in the left part, there is a dependent incoming current because of this independent current source. So uh, as it's incoming, so we should take it as with a minus sign, with a negative sign. Let's write 4.8 amperes here. Then uh, there is already given the direction of this Ix, but we have V1 and zero. So we can write this like V1 or 7.5 ohms. V1 or 7.5. So from this side, we should assume it's 
going out from the node v1 minus v0 plus v1 minus v0 or 2.5 ohms. So uh, I guess it's pretty understandable, but before writing the equation at V0, I'm going to tell you that when there is um, voltage source between the two nodes, as you can see between the V0 and V2, this concept is called superposition. That means you take these two nodes as one whole. I mean, when you write the equation for V0, you always consider also the currents going out or in at V2 node. So this is because as you can see at V0, uh, we have, uh, for example, outgoing, yeah, outgoing car. But at V2, it's going to be incoming. In this, in both cases, it's I1 and I1, for example, I1. From this side is I1, and from V2 side, it's going to be from left side, I mean, left to the left and I1. So at V0, it's kind of, outgoing at V2, it's kind of incoming. And when we do K, uh, KCL, yeah, from V0, it's going to be plus. And from V2, it's going to be minus. So they're going to be kind of uh, canceled. So that's why, I mean, this is a concept of superposition. But anyway, don't remember this thing. Just remember that when there is a voltage source between two nodes, you take those two nodes, same. You write, that means you write equations for both nodes simultaneously. So for example, at V0, just delete it, we have a current going to the left from V0 to V1, V1. We assume, yeah? Yeah, we are so, assuming. Yeah, uh, as the current going to the down. Okay. And as we are taking the V0 and V2 as the same, we don't consider this branch. We don't consider this branch. They're kind of the same. We don't consider it, man. At V2, it's going to the down and it's going to the right. So you can, you can kind of assume V2 uh, and V0 nodes as the one, yeah? So that's why there's no current flows where, as we are assuming between these two nodes. So let's write the equation. Number two. It's gonna, yeah, number two. So let's write it from here. So let's take the left side of V0, V0 <coughs> minus V1. or 2.5 ohms. Uh, from the, to the bottom. So plus, just to V0 or 10 ohms. This case and at V2 and from the yeah. yeah from the ref side we also take into consideration this arrows and this currents so then plus V2 over 2.5 yeah this is the current going down from V2 to the our reference node across uh, resistance 2.5 and okay uh, the current goes to the right it's going from V2 to 12 volts. Yeah. So you can write here 12 volts. Yeah. What do you mean? Yeah. Because, you know, we are writing 12 volts because outgoing polarity is plus. Yeah. Yeah. So current going from V2 to 12 and over one ohm resistance. And now here you can see that we have two equations, but there are three unknowns. Yeah, three so words. that means we have to find one more equation. So as you can see, uh, let's uh, look at the superposition, super node. It's called super node, excuse me. So at V0, V2, there's a voltage source here. Yeah? Yeah. So from V0, we're going to the V2 and we meet Ix. Ix, this is a voltage source. And with the polarity is minus, that means this is going to be voltage up. So V0, it's going to the right and meets voltage source with polarity minus voltage up. You can write like a mountain up. Yeah. No, no, no. So it's going plainly and up, up, and it's going to V2. Plain. Yeah. That means V0 plus Ix equals V2. 
Is this understandable? I mean, the, if there was plus minus, I mean, V0 and then polarity is plus, there would be minus Ix, there would be voltage drop. In, this, in that case, there would be V0 minus Ix equals to V2. But as you can see, there's a polarity is minus. So in this case, we're going to have voltage up. So V0 plus Ix equals to V2. And here you can also see that V1, there's a current going to the down, it's Ix. So it's going from V1 to zero, yeah? There's a reference. So now we can derive that Ix equals to V1 over 7.5. So let me do this. And for this equation, V1 over 7.5. equals ix. So you can substitute ix in third uh, equation with v1 over 7.5. You can write it maybe. Yeah, let me not write. Okay, so then we'll have three equations, one, second, and third, and three unknowns, v0, v1, and v2. So then you can easily find the values of v1 and v2 and v0. So, any kind of questions regarding these problems? If there is something not understandable, you can ask the question in chat or using your microphone. So, um, this was our first tutorial ever. Um, I hope you will support our Academic Support Club of Absolute Students Union. Uh, sorry for some mistakes or some misunderstandings between us, but uh, uh, there's one question. So let's okay. explain how you find equation four. So, so now let's see in a fourth equation, Ix has already given to us because um, in, the, in the question, yeah, its direction is downside. So we are taking the reference this one is reference. So these three guys are same. Let's assume they are same because there is no resistance between them. They share the same electric potential. So the current according to Ohm's law, you have read about, yeah? I is equal to what? V over resistance, yeah? V over resistance. So between two points, what is the electric potential difference? or voltage, it is just V1 because there is zero electric potential is zero. So our V will be V1, then our resistance is 7.5. That's why we got the force equation. And can you explain one more time why 4.8 has minus? So we have we, we are assuming all of the nodes, uh, all of the currents should going out from the node. So let me drop going out here is in node, node voltage explanation and definition we should take they are going out from the node but in this case this is already given this is the independent independent current source and it is entering but not uh, exciting not going out from the node that's why we just take minus 4.8 in the future if you if you will face some kind of problems like this you also, you should also take minus um, before of this um, amperes. So the overall, when the, the value, I mean, the given current is given, as it's a dependent or independent, you take its direction as it is. If it's incoming, you take minus, if it's outgoing, you take plus. Mm -hmm. But when you just yourself use node voltage and kind of define the currents, for example, in V1 or kind of to, the da, to the right, to the left, yeah, you always take them outgoing by the definition of not voltage, but there is uh, already current, so that's why it's going to be incoming. We can take this as a plus because it's given in the question like incoming. So uh, that was the last problem we have solved. Uh, if you show some kind of a challenging and uh, some interest uh, through this kind of a tutorials, we'll make them a lot during this and uh, following weeks. But now we have the shortage of time. You know, we are just using Zoom platform uh, and it has uh, some kind of a limit about time.
Okay, so <clears throat> unfortunately we couldn't solve many questions, but don't worry, we're going to send the questions and all solutions today. I mean, all the solutions, you can find them. And uh, hopefully we'll organize CL and other kind of subject tutorials weekly. And at 3.30, we're going to have uh, DS tutorial. It's going to be really amazing. We're going to analyze linked list, write implementation, and also solve one medium level lead code problem. So if there are no questions, see you soon in 20 minutes. Rahmat from Mr. Write about your feedbacks in, in the discussion group. Upload some video to YouTube also because upload video will take forever. Okay, we'll upload it to YouTube.